appreciate you guys tuning in. Happy Easter to everyone. I know uh, some of you are probably at church or having dinner with the family. Just thought I would come live for a few minutes. Um, just boarded the ship. Well, I've been on the ship for about two and a half hours or so. Um, but yeah, I'm on board Discovery Princess. This is a solo cruise and I, uh, this is cruise number 50 for me. So <laughs> I thought and check in with you guys. I hope you guys are doing well on this Sunday. It is a um, rainy and dreary day here in uh, San Pedro, um, Los Angeles. And so that's why I'm inside and not outside. So I don't know if I'm going to take you guys around or not. It looks like maybe it's starting to clear up, but it hasn't yet. But welcome in, welcome in. I appreciate you guys tuning in today. Um, if you don't know, I'm Raquel from MH Family Adventures. We are a cruising family. Um, I am currently sitting in the Take 5 uh, Jazz Lounge or bar, what have you, um, on board. Cabins are getting ready. People are starting to move about. So I figured this would be a quiet spot to come go live. Um, I may go around, walk you guys around the ship for a little bit, but we'll see. Um, right now it's raining out. So I hope you guys are doing well. Let me know if you can hear me okay. So we have a couple people coming in. appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, if you're just tuning in, I am on board um, Discovery Princess. This is cruise number 50 for me. I'm solo the family. Um, if you guys have been following, we just got off Carnival Panorama yesterday. And welcome in Phil and D. Um, appreciate you guys being here. Uh, berries and cream. Woohoo. Yep. Number 50. Uh, welcome in LaShante from Atlanta. Appreciate you being here. So yeah, the family just got home like 6 a.m. this morning. Um, they had a late flight last night. And so I'm um, welcome in Anisha and, um, and um, Ella McKinley. Thanks for being here. Um, so yeah, the family just got home. They're still sleeping. I think they might be waking up now, but yeah, it was a long travel day for them. Um, I stayed the night over in Los Angeles and caught an Uber to the cruise this morning. So um, this is just a three-day cruise on board Discovery Princess. I figured since, you know, we flew all the way over here from Ohio that I needed to take advantage. So I saw a three-day cruise and decided to book it. Um, welcome in, Cassandra. Hello, hello. Um, this is sailing from um, Los Angeles, the San Pedro, San Pedro um, cruise terminal. Guys, it was congested getting here. Like I was in the Uber for over an hour so. Um, kind of a crazy setup for this terminal. They make everyone, there's two ships in port. I think um, Norwegian Norwegian Bliss is in port right now. And so it was just hectic trying to get in. They make all Ubers come through one gate, whether you're going to our ship, Discovery Princess, or the other ship, and it was just chaos. But yep, so in LA, so right now we are on West Coast time. It's one o'clock here. I know back home it's four o'clock. So, but happy Easter to everyone. I know some of you guys are um, at church or probably um, with family um, having dinner, which this is, it's not my first time cruising for Easter, but it's my first time cruising Easter without the family, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, Tamika, welcome in. Appreciate you being here. Christine says, hello, 50 down and 50 more to go. Yep, way more than 50. We'll see. Uh, I think by the end of the year, I'll probably be at 60. I think I'll be at 60, if not if not 62. Um, that's the plan. Welcome in uh, Cynthia and Curtis, Christine, Tamika, everyone saying happy Easter. Yeah, I just thought I would go live for a few minutes. Um, yeah, I have a, a Raspberry Bailey's here. Um, the cabins just opened up. So I have pretty much already walked the ship. It is rainy out. Looks like the sun is trying to come out now, but it's been raining pretty much all morning and it's cold. Um, surprisingly, it's like 60 degrees, but it's like a cool breeze um thank you so much curtis let's see welcome in sig the solo cruiser appreciate you tuning in um but yeah it's, it's gonna be a very short cruise but what's nice about this is i was just on sky princess if you guys didn't catch the first part i'm kind of behind in getting vlogs edited with all the travel recently um so the next vlog probably won't come out till friday usually i would have one on friday and sunday but it probably won't come out until uh friday i'm thinking but um, I just got off Sky Princess and this ship is almost identical. They have a couple little um, things that are slightly different, but pretty much the layout is the same. So it's nice. I had sailed on that ship for seven days, so I pretty much knew the layout. And so, um, yeah, it's kind of easy to move, maneuver and get around. Um, welcome in Fabian from Germany. Appreciate you being here. Welcome in. Is it um, Jan? Um, welcome in. Just glad to actually catch a live. A live live, yes. <laughs> well, we appreciate those of you who even go back and watch the replay. So thank you so much for doing that. Welcome in, Miss Desi59. Appreciate you being here and thank you for being a channel member. We have a few channel members here. 
Um, so yeah, Discovery Princess. Um, I've completed my muster. Um, this is drink number two. So I do have the Princess Premier Package for this sailing. Now you guys know I'm not a huge drinker, but just the value of the Princess Premier. I think almost every time I cruise Princess, I will have it. If you don't know, Princess Premier um, is like their drink package, but it's not just a drink package. So just to give you a comparison, if you cruise Carnival, you're paying about $60, $65 per person per day for just drinks. With Princess Premier, you pay um, between, for Princess Plus, it's $60. Princess Premier, it's $80 um, per person per day. And you get um, unlimited premium drinks. You get four, up to, for, this is Princess Premier, you get up to four Wi-Fi devices. You get two specialty dining restaurants. You get unlimited casual dining. Your gratuities are included in that. Um, you get priority in the theater, like priority seating, um, and some other perks. Oh, you get unlimited specialty desserts. So they have like a, um, a spot where you can get juice bar. They also have a, a gelato shop. All of that stuff is included with the Princess Premier. So when you look at the map of the other cruise lines, you're paying $60, $70 per day for just drinks. You're getting your gratuities included. You're getting all these things. So, I mean, if you're going to pay... In my mind, if I'm paying $60 for this three-day sailing for gratuities, like that's one day of Princess Plus or Premier close to it. So you might as well get that and get all of these other things included. So yeah, I have a Raspberry Baileys for today starting off. Let's see who else is coming in. I appreciate you guys tuning in today. Um, Q Creation says, my cousin is currently on the Carnival Jubilee. Their Easter Sunday main, menu, main dining room menu is awesome. Yeah, I'm actually scheduled to be in the dining room on this sailing for tonight. Um, so I'm curious to see if they're gonna have an Easter menu. I, I'm guessing they will. Um, when you enter, they had like Easter bunny, um, a bear that you could take a picture with. Um, the drinks that they had across all the bars are I guess Easter themed with raspberry. They had like chocolate and different things. So yeah, I'll check out the menu tonight um, to see. Now if the menu doesn't look good, then I may be going to one of the, the included casual dining spots, but I'll let you guys know. Yeah, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Kenneth says, how much is the Wi-Fi on the Princess to use social media? So Princess has just one package. Um, they don't split it off like Carnival does with the social media value and then premium. It's all one package. So on like a, a seven night sailing, you're paying probably about $150, $160 for internet for one device. Um, that's why you might as well just get the Princess Premiere because you can get up to four devices and a trick with the Princess Premiere is that like, let's say if I'm cruising and there's five of us in the cabin, which they don't really have cabins that have five, but if we did, like Ron and I could get Princess Premiere and not get it for the kids. And we both have four devices each, so we can just share our devices. So they allow you to share your devices. Um, the kids just wouldn't have specialty dining included. So we'd have to purchase theirs or what have you. So they don't require everyone in the cabin to get it. They just require the first two in the cabin to get it, which is nice. Um, so we'll be on Sun Princess in October and we have Princess Premiere. And so like Joe Marie's in our cabin. Um, so Ron and I have Princess Premier. She does not. Um, so we'll just pay for her gratuities and pay for her specialty dining out of pocket. But she'll use our Wi-Fi. Not that she gets on Wi-Fi anyways. But yeah, so it's it's a good value to to get the Wi-Fi um, or get the Princess Premier or Princess Plus. Now, if you do Princess Plus, you only get one device. And so I tend to, because I work when I cruise, I tend to need more than one device whenever I cruise. Um, welcome in, Melty. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Shramika, uh, 1983. Welcome in. Um, let's see. Yeah, if you guys have any questions about um, Princess Cruises, feel free to ask or anything about cruising. This is cruise number 50. Um, if you caught my live from Carnival Panorama a couple days ago, I didn't plan this out well because honestly, I would have preferred to celebrate it my 50th cruise with the family. <laughs> my math was just off. Um, so it is what it is. It's solo and that's fine because this is my 50th cruise, not their 50th cruise. I think the kids are probably approaching 25, 30 cruises. Ron is probably approaching 20. Um, so I have more under my belt than they do. Um, Kenna says, hi, happy Easter. Love your videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Welcome in Edna's world. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, welcome in, Mark. He says, hello, who let the dogs out? Um, so, guys, if you guys didn't catch my Margarita Villa at Sea series when I was in um, Grand Bahama, Mark was actually our tour guide, our wonderful tour guide. So I appreciate you tuning in as well. Um, he said, sipping on the coconut rum in paradise on the open air tram. Hello and happy Easter. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and happy Easter to you. Berries and Cream says, what area of the ship are you in now? I'm actually in Take 5, which is their jazz lounge. Um, they have jazz performances every night. Um, this was a spot that I really liked on Sky Princess. You'll see that in the vlogs um, that'll come out soon. Um, it's quiet right now because everyone's um, out on the open decks. It's starting to dry up, it looks like, maybe. Um, but everyone's getting in their cabin. So this was a quiet spot, so I figured I would come here. Um, let's see. <laughs> Michael says, can you please do another video with the monkey climbing on your arm? Loved it. Yeah, no. What's funny about that is I had no clue that that even happened until after I posted another short video and um, a friend, client, a subscriber of mine happened to say, did he pee on you? And I was like, what? And she said, like, zoom in. So I did. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I did all the editing, didn't even notice that until she pointed it out. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, I probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> I know the kids want to go and um, experience the monkeys or whatever, but I think I've done it twice, so I'm kind of like I'm I'm over it now, especially after that. Um, let's see here. Welcome in, Carlene. See it with see. Appreciate you being here. It says cooking dinner and listening in. I saw you guys chatting back and forth and um, about your Sunday dinners. I would normally be cooking. I have to. I just did a um, burger order to be ready when I get home because like Dyson is so traditional. He wants to make sure he's going to have his traditional, you know, Easter dinner. So, you know, of course, we're going to have the ham, the yams, the mac and cheese, the uh, greens or cabbage and you know, all that stuff. So I'll have to cook when I get home because we've been cruising. And I'll be honest, like I'm just I get tired of cruise food. So I can't wait to get home to cook. Miss Finney says you're living your best life and I'm here for it. Congrats on 50. Thank you so much, Miss Finney. Yeah, I'm trying. It's tiring, though. <laughs> it's, it's it's tiring. So, um no, I really, I really do enjoy it. it. It's fun. It can be tiring. I'm learning to find balance with it. Um, so for instance, I've made the decision that the last sea day of each cruise, I'm not vlogging anything. So on Carnival Panorama, it's going to be kind of an abrupt stop after our port days. The last sea day, I didn't even pick up my camera. I don't even think I really had my phone on me. Um, I just think I have to get to the point where, I mean, I am enjoying my cruises. I find balance. I don't film all day long. But just to not have to even worry about filming at all like that, that, you know, I needed that break. Um, and this world said, what do you use to edit your TikToks? Do you film through TikTok or a phone? See, I don't even know how to film through TikTok. Um, I pretty much if you if you follow me on social media, I post on I post the same TikTok or reel on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and um, YouTube shorts, depending on the length of the video. Um, so I use, I just use my phone to film and then I go onto CapCut and I edit there and I post it on all four platforms. But yeah, I don't even know how to film from TikTok. I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> so <laughs> TikTok's not my, my, my favorite thing. Um, so yeah, I think, I think Instagram you can film. I don't even do that. I, everything I do is through CapCut and I just upload it. So I upload, download, whatever, and then upload it to the platform. Um... See, what C says, good strategy. Yeah, yeah. It felt good to have a C day and not film anything. And I just did whatever I wanted to do. Like, because I feel like sometimes I'm showing things, not really because I want to do it, but it's because I know people want to see it. Or like I have clients that might be getting ready to cruise and I want to show them everything. So sometimes I feel like I'm, I don't want to say forced because I'm not forced to do any of this. But sometimes I kind of feel like, ah, oh, I need to go, you know, try to film this. And I really don't want to be there. So I'm like, you know, yeah, every, the last three day of every cruise, except for like a three day, a three day, I'll probably film the whole three because three days is, you know, a short cruise. Um, but like a seven day cruise, the last sea day, that's mine. Um, and the families, anything you're looking forward to seeing on this cruise? No, not really. Um, this is a short three day cruise. We're going to Ensenada, Mexico. That was our family's first cruise port back in 2019 um, when we cruise out of Long Beach, Ensenada is kind of like it's not the best place. I am going to La Bufadora, which is the big blowhole. Um, that's where we went as a family. So I'm going there. I'm really, I'm going there not to see the blowhole. I'm going there to get tacos. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm looking forward to tacos. Guys, the food, the last cruise, the ports we went to, the food just wasn't good. At least where we went, um, the food wasn't good. So I'm looking forward to hopefully they have the same tacos. I know it's been years, but five years. But um, yeah, I'm excited to go get some tacos. Uh, but yeah, not anything I'm looking forward to seeing. 
Um, I want to see how the shows are different on this ship than Sky Princess. If you have, if you're just tuning in, I'm on currently on board Discovery Princess. I was on Sky Princess what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, so they are sister ships, a little slightly different with some aspects, but for the most part, the same. Um, so I enjoyed getting on the ship, knowing exactly where to go because everything is pretty much the same, but yeah, I don't have any, I don't have anything I'm really looking forward to just capturing content, trying to see the shows. Um, the food on princess is really good. So I'm looking forward to the steakhouse, um, which I have booked for tomorrow night, I think. Um, so looking forward to that. Uh, Michael says, how does your family decide on which cruise ships to sail on together? We don't, I make all the decisions. Um, and Honestly, it's based on the price and the kids break. So when the kids are with us, and this is the thing I get questioned all the time, like, do your kids go to school? Yeah, my kids rarely miss days of school. The max I allow them to miss per year is five days. That's it. Um, and our district is a little bit more flexible with that. So um, yeah, it's not because our district, um, just some little, back, little background, um, they have so many in Ohio, you have to have so many um, hours per school year. Our school district is way over that amount because we have longer days. And so it would really take the kids to miss like 25 days of school before they were considered truant or started the process for truancy. So as a parent, I've said, hey, well, if that's the case, then we're gonna say five days is the max that they can miss. And usually that's coupled with like spring break. So spring break, they missed one day because we left a day early. Um, so pretty much the cruises are based on budget. Um, and whatever fits into our schedule. So I don't really have a strategy for that for with the kids. Uh, for me, it's whatever, like if I'm cruising solo, whatever has the best solo rate. Um, and I try to, when I go solo, I try to do shorter cruises because I don't, honestly, I don't like being away from the family for a whole week um, or longer, but sometimes you just have to. But yeah, no strategy for that. Um, the family goes whenever they have breaks. So people feel like, oh, they miss a lot of school. They really don't. And a lot of times people don't understand that what you see may not be how it happened. So I may not release a vlog until, you know, this week or next week, but that vlog might've been filmed back in December. So, and that might've been during their winter break. But sometimes I get, I get questioned all the time. Like your kids miss awful lot of school. I'm like, they're not currently cruising. That video is like three or four months old. And I try to stay as current as I can with the vlogs, but sometimes you might see them. We do the bulk of our cruising in the summer, but those vlogs are not released in the summer. They might be released throughout the year. Uh, and this says, okay, thanks. I have CapCut and need to learn to use it. Yeah, I think it's easy. Um, and there's another feature called a, called the, like a, it's like a quick edit where you just put your clips and it'll do like some editing for you. You don't have to worry about it. Welcome in Angela. Happy Easter to you. Yes. Tacos. I love tacos. That's like, that's like my thing. <laughs> I'll go anywhere for a good taco. If you guys saw my Costa Maya video, I had lobster tacos and those are probably some of the best tacos I've ever had. Um, so when I go back to Costa Maya, that's where I'll be going. Uh, is it uh, Kurika? Welcome in. Uh, Cassandra says, will you ever do a meet and greet? If so, where? Um, <laughs> um, I've never thought about doing a meet and greet outside of like, we have a couple group cruises coming up. So there'll be, I don't like to call it a meet and greet because to call it a meet and greet makes me feel like I'm like some celebrity or some, I don't know, that's just weird for me. So I don't think I would ever call it like a meet and greet, um, but more just like a, I'm not, surprisingly guys, I'm an introvert. So I'm not as social as you may think. Ron is the social butterfly. Um, so if I did a meet and greet, it would be more just like a, let's meet up. Um, you know, we're having a group, we have our group cruise coming up here soon and we're going to have like a meetup, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a meet or greet because I don't consider myself like a celebrity, but, um, but yeah, we will, I will plan. I won't plan anything outside of like a group cruise or anything like that. Um, Lynn says got a four day cruise out of Charleston in May. I hope it's a nice boat. That is the carnival sunshine. I have not been on that one, but um, Carlene, see it with C. Um, she's in the chat somewhere. Um, check out, she just got off of Carnival, I believe, yeah, Carnival Sunshine not too long ago. Check out her vlogs. I have not been on that one yet, but hope to get on it soon. Uh, Kirika says, have you been on Carnival Sunrise? Yes, three times. So um, you can check those vlogs out. Carnival Sunrise is one of our favorite Carnival ships. I know it's been having some issues lately, though. They had an issue in the summertime where there was, the AC wasn't working appropriately. Um, they just recently had a flood. So do your research. 
Um, I think the ship needs to do have some updates, but as far as like family fun and having the amenities and not being a huge ship, I feel like Carnival Sunrise is where it's at, but it sounds like they're having some maintenance issues possibly going on right now. Um, Angela says, Discovery Princess is supposed to have a specialty dining experience called 360. Are you doing that one? I'm not. I just can't pay $150 for one meal. I just can't. <laughs> so um, I went to inquire about it. There's still space. So I did kind of, I don't like to throw out there that I'm a content creator, but I did kind of mention it. So if there's space available and they don't sell out, they might invite me on, but no guarantees on that. But I just, I just can't. Like as much as we cruise, I know you guys are probably thinking, well, you cruise all the time and you spend money and do this and that, but I'm very strategic. We're, we're very cheap, very strategic in how we spend, spend money. Um, and I just don't think $150 on one meal is worth it for me because I'm not like the food on cruise ships to me, I don't cruise for food. So the food is just not, I'll pay for a steakhouse sometimes. I'll pay for, you know, Mexican food or whatever, but I just, it's just not even that great to where I'm going to pay that kind of money. But I'll let you know for sure if I get in. I did just kind of throw that out there. And I said, hey, you know, I was on board Sky Princess creating content for Princess. And uh, I love to create some content <laughs> about 360. Uh, so they told me to check back, which might be a no, but that's fine. Welcome in. Is it uh, Cap Kappa Bay, USA? Welcome in. Claudia says, oh, welcome in. Claudia says, we don't. I make all the decisions. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's how it is. I do. I make I make all the decisions when it comes to our travel and cruising. Um, that's just, yeah, how it is. Kirika says, we'll be going on Carnival Sunrise out of Port Miami next spring break to Jamaica and Grand Cayman. Yes, I have vlogs on both. Hold on, there's an announcement. Have a good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Office of the World speaking from the bridge. This is to advise that... Uh, shortly we'll conduct bunker operation uh, sorry there's an announcement on the starboard side the bunkering operation uh, will commence shortly and uh, as a safety precaution the starboard side of the x7 midship and aft will be closed and uh smoking including the use of uh, electronic cigarettes there's refueling so there's no smoking the is what he's saying so i repeat just as a they safety precaution, so uh, the starboard side of the deck seven and midship and aft will be closed, and the smoking, including the use of electronic cigarettes, will not be permitted on the starboard side. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you can give that video a thumbs up for me while we, we wait. I just I can't ideas. function. Thank it's hard you. for me to talk and listen. <laughs> I can't multitask that way. Uh, but Karika, I, I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, she says, we'll be going on Carnival Sunrise out of Port Miami. Yes, Jamaica and Grand Cayman. Yeah, we have vlogs on it. Um, and actually, our Carnival Sunrise, the last Carnival Sunrise, did those same two ports. And we will always try to cruise during spring break or long holidays, but never during hurricane season. Um, we cruise, yes, yeah, spring break, long holidays. But we do cruise hurricane season. And thankfully, let me knock on wood, <laughs> um, we have not experienced any any bad weather. So... But that's why you have travel insurance, too, to make sure, like, if something happens, you're going to be able to get refunded. Ron says, you are a celebrity. Not many folks had a monkey pee on them. Whatever. <laughs> Angela says, do you book only cruises or land-based travel stuff? I'm asking because I just had to book a rush trip to Washington, D.C. for myself. Three people, I got a headache in the process. I only book cruises. I literally booked 15 cruises since I left home. Um... It's like the more I cruise, the more cruises I book. I don't book anything outside of that because of the headache. <laughs> and honestly, because I feel like at this point I've cruised 50 times, I'm kind of an expert on cruises. I can help families pick out the right ship for them, help guide, you know, if they have questions about, how, you know, procedures and things like that on cruise ships. So I only do cruises, excursions. Um, I'll help with airport transfers. I do not book flights ever. Um, so yeah, anything cruise related, I'll help with, but no flights and no land-based travel. I don't do any, I have access to book all-inclusives and things like that, I just choose not to. Um, my focus is cruising and cruising only. Uh, Myers Mel says, the sunshine is awesome, sailed on her three times. Yes. Uh, see what she says, yes, enjoyed sunshine, just had a bug situation in my cabin. I wasn't gonna mention that. <laughs> not dead bug, but some type of bug, so be mindful about the possibility of that when unpacking, absolutely. And that can happen any cruise, anywhere. Um, we had a situation on Carnival Liberty where my sister had bed bugs in her cabin. 
Um, keep in mind, that is not the cruise line. That was brought on by someone. And that's going to be the case anytime you go to any public area, honestly. I mean, um, hotels, you know, resorts, it could happen. So, you know, if something like that happens, don't blast the, the cruise line unless there's like a huge problem on the ship. But it happens, um, unfortunately. And yeah, I can tell you in the case of bed bugs, Carnival made it right. And I think they did to you as well. See, let's see. Um, have you been on Carnival Spirit? We have not. Um, not yet. Um, luckily, we won't be going until next March. Hopefully, they'll take care of those issues by then. Yeah, I'm sure it's taken care of. Carnival's really good about it. There's an issue. They they get it resolved. Um, so, but, you know, sometimes things are unpre or unpredictable. It's kind of like having a car. <laughs> sometimes, you know, you can go in and get the maintenance done, this and that, and then something else happens and it's out of your control. Um, Lynn says, is it better to use a travel agent or book directly with Carnival? Um, as a travel agent, travel advisor, business owner, I would say using a travel agent. Um, especially if you're newer to cruising, because if you book, and let me just say this, a good travel agent, a good travel advisor, someone that can help guide you, um, you know, price check for you, get you the best rate, um, answer all your questions, things like that. Yes. Now I will say this too. I've had some clients recently that I've had, to, I literally had to turn someone back over to the cruise line. And let me just tell you why. Good More announcements. I'm sorry. All right. I'm gonna. Can you guys? If I talk, can you hear me? I just they're talking about the muster. Um. So yes. Yeah, so, you know, I recently had a client. I've had a couple that I've had to, um, like I helped book them or what have you, but I had to turn them back over to the cruise line or to another agent because. If you're the type that you want like an instant reply, instant decision, instant quote, instant, like if you're one that you send the email and you want to reply in two minutes, then working with a travel agent may not be the best thing because like in my case, I have like a 48 hour response time, but it's almost never 48 hours. It's almost usually within two hours. Um, and I've had a couple that literally, you know, sent a message they wanted you know this and that to happen and if i didn't reply within like 10 minutes it was like what's going on and i just have to you know some people you can work with some people you just can't and i'll be honest like i just can't because i i feel like i have a really good response time um it's not going to be the same as if you go on the website and do it because you can do it yourself but if you're waiting for answers or if you need help with something then um yeah i'm not going to tell you guys what the whole situation was but i can tell you that it was a price drop of under $5 that was missed because I didn't respond within 30 minutes. And yeah, so I had to just release. But um, if you are a person that, you know, you're patient and you can wait now, I'm not saying wait on a travel advisor that takes, you know, days to respond because I'm, I'm just not that. I'm usually going to respond to you within a couple of hours, sometimes almost immediately. Um, but if you aren't patient, then I would say book with the cruise line. You can call them. Um, the thing though is you're going to wait on hold with the cruise line. Um, more than likely the agent you talked to have, has never cruised. And I say that because I was at one point on the back end where I was carnival customer service. And I could tell you most of the agents had never even cruised. So they're reading from like a script. So they can't give you some of the expertise that you may need. If, and I'm speaking for all cruise lines, not just Carnival, but they can, may not be able to give you the expertise that you're asking for. If you're asking for suggestions or tips or how do I go about embarkation, how do I, they may not be able to do that. So yes, working with a travel advisor, one who travels and cruises regularly can give you those things. Um, also price checking, um, getting you the best rate. Sometimes you get like extra onboard credit, little perks and things like that. Um, so I personally say yes, definitely a travel advisor. But if you are someone, and that's okay if you're like that, if you are the person that needs it done right now, you want to have absolute control over everything. Um, for instance, when you book your travel advisor, we have to process the payments for you. If you are someone that wants to be able to just go on and make your payment immediately, because you might send me a message to say, hey, can you process the payment for $50? It might take me an hour to get that $50 payment processed. I'm not like at that very moment doing it when you first send it. So it's not like an automated process, if that makes sense. So yeah, depending on your personality, you may or may not want to use a travel agent, but I strongly encourage you to use one. Um, but yeah, 
Angela says, I try to be frugal with traveling too, except for special occasions. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Special occasions. And yeah, this is my 50th cruise. So maybe I will splurge <laughs> or maybe they'll, maybe they'll, I didn't mention that though. I didn't mention this is my 50th cruise to them. Um, but who knows what'll happen, but we'll see. Um, let's see. Anisha says it's the educator in you, the planning. Yeah. The educator in me. Welcome in uh, Fats and Trey. Appreciate you guys being here. Uh, let's see. I feel like I've had worse weather outside of hurricane season. I agree. I think that January, February time frame is when I've had it the rockiest and that's outside of hurricane season. Um, so yeah, you're welcome. Is there travel insurance you recommend outside of the cruise line insurance? Um, the one that I refer my clients to is Allianz insurance. Um, sometimes you can get it cheaper through them. Um, with more coverage. And I like them because their response time, as far as like, if you have to make a claim is really quick. Like we had an incident where Joe had to go to the medical center on board in the sea Maravilla. And I think her bill was like $150 within 24 hours. They had that money back to us. Um, so they have the quicker response time. Travelers insured is another one. Um, but their response time just isn't, from my experience, as good as um, Allianz. But that's who, who I refer clients to if they choose not to use the cruise lines insurance. Um, you have to be careful, though, sometimes using the cruise lines insurance because sometimes it may not cover, like, flights. Um, I can tell you, like, MSC in particular, they do not have a cancel for any reason clause. Um, so, I, you know, just make sure you read the fine print of all of that. And even if you book through Allianz, a lot of times it will not have a cancel for any reason clause. You have to add that on. Uh, Angela says, darn it, I understand. It's it's good to stick with what you're an expert at. Yeah, absolutely. Claudia says, congratulations on cruise number 50. I really enjoyed your most recent blogs on Margaritaville. I appreciated your positive spirit and your emphasis that not every cruise line is for everyone. They're not. They really aren't. Um, and that's fine. Some people will get on Princess and say, this isn't for me. Now, I can tell you guys this. My last princess cruise vlog i talked about how the demographics it was like a lot of older people um i think with this being a three-day cruise i've noticed a lot more kids on this sailing um, and a lot more younger people so if you are someone who um, i can tell you my princess cruise it was you know probably 60 and up majority of the crowd if you don't like that vibe maybe try a shorter princess cruise to test it out because this vibe is different than what it was a couple weeks ago. But yeah, every cruise line's different. Everything's not gonna work for everyone and that's fine. Um, I enjoyed Margaritaville. I'm not a turn up person, um, but I enjoyed it because of the live music. Everyone was just having fun. So, and I know the ship had quirks before, but they really did go in and clean up things. Have you been on that Alaska cruise? I heard it was beautiful. Yeah, we've been to Alaska. Um, I was Alaska last year on Crown Princess and we did Carnival Splendor Alaska and I'm trying to get, um, I'm trying to get back to Alaska this season. So we'll see what happens. Um, Carlene says, yes, they were pretty responsive. Yeah, they really are. Welcome in Shamika. I appreciate you being here. Christine says, I'll be taking my second cruise this December on the spirit again. It was really nice. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard about it. Um, Welcome in, Adrian from Inksville Travels. Appreciate you being here. It says, we can hear you, but the announcer does have a great voice. <laughs> yeah, they tend to. Uh, Angela says, recalls a professional caring and awesome travel agent, and she's very patient. Thank you so much, Angela. I appreciate that. I really I appreciate you being a client. Um, Heinz says, welcome in, Heinz Adventures. How many times have you been on the ship? This is my first time. I try not to repeat ships. Um, for those of you just now tuning in, this is Discovery Princess. I was on Sky Princess a few weeks ago, and I just got off Carnival Panorama yesterday. Um, I try not to repeat ships now that I'm really doing this full time. Um, it doesn't really benefit me to do a ship multiple times because the point is to get the vlogs out to you guys. You know, getting the vlogs out there, I get paid through social media and through YouTube. Um, and I get to experience new ships, and I can share this with my clients because I've been on these ships. So. I try not to repeat shows if I can help it. Welcome in on deck with CB. Appreciate you being here. Myers Mel says, if I book a cruise through TA, can I still do a payment plan? I have always used the Carnival Planner. I completely missed what you said. Yeah, if you book through a TA, you can, so like you can make your own payment plan for the most part. Um, 
So you pay your deposit and then whatever your final payment date, you can just, so like for me, um, once you pay your deposit, you can just tell me when you want to make your next payment. You can wait till the very end to pay it all. You can pay $10. You know, I have some clients that pay every week. You know, they get paid every Friday and they're like, hey, can you run a $25 payment every Friday? I have no problem doing that. Um, so whatever payment plan works for you works for me as long as we get your cruise paid. <laughs> so um, so that's that's kind of how I handle that. Um, you can also, um, using a travel advisor, some travel advisors um, offer uplift financing. Like I'm certified with uplift, um, which offers sometimes 0% financing. So if you're looking for like a last minute cruise and don't have time to make payments and you don't want to fork out a lot of cash, you can use uplift, pay off your cruise, and then pay uplift monthly over like 18 months or so. Um, so yeah, you can pay whenever you want. You just can't go on to like Carnival's website and make your payment. You have to contact your travel advisor to make the payment. Or like in my case, you have access to a client portal where you can just go in and pre-authorize it. Once you pre-authorize it, it sends me a message to run a payment and then I run it. So you don't have to contact me per se, but you can. You can just send me an email or a text and say, hey, can you run um, this payment for me? Thank you so much, Fats and Tree. Appreciate it. Welcome in, uh, Charvon. Thanks for being here. Um, aren't cruises for people who are afraid or too lazy to travel like a normal person? Well, I'm not even going to respond to that because um, I wouldn't consider cruising to be lazy. Um, travel travel as a whole um, requires a lot of work and effort. So I'm just going to ignore that comment. Um, Anisha says, where are you and the family sailing for Thanksgiving this year? Have you decided? Um, we do not have any cruises booked for... Um, um, let's see. It says, where are you? Oh, um, we are, we are not cruising for Thanksgiving or Christmas. Not yet because we're planning a trip to Africa. So my brother is in, um, currently in Rwanda. And so we are trying to plan a two to three week trip going there. So I didn't want to book a cruise, not knowing. So we're still trying to work out some details. The issue is the flights guys. When you have a family of five and you're trying to go international like that, the flights are, yeah, so I'm working on trying to um, hopefully get some sponsors <laughs> for this trip. Um, so right now, we're not cruising for Thanksgiving or Christmas this year. We will be home for Thanksgiving, and then Christmas, we will be in Africa. I'm going to speak it into existence. Um, David says, or you can just have on deck with CB pay for your cruise. Yeah, if anybody's willing to pay for a cruise, reach out. <laughs> Curling says, that trip will be amazing. Yeah, we're excited. We're excited. So... Um, we just got to work out all the details. Um, Angela says, oh, yes, Africa. I'm hoping to go in 2026. Yeah, my brother's going to be there. He's working until, what year is this, 2024? I think until 2026. Um, so I was like, well, we got to make a trip there. Um, that gives us more reason because now we don't have to pay for lodging. So, <laughs> so um, like, yeah, we'll, we'll make it Let's see. Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear me now? Um, so sound is off. Hope you can hear me now.
All right, can you guys hear me? This is a backup mic. I don't think the other one was fully charged. Let me know if you can hear me. I'm sorry about that. You can't hear me. <laughs> on deck with CD says, come on now, uh, David. We're just trying to make it out here. We need sponsors too. Absolutely. <laughs> Stop, Ron. <laughs> All right, let's see. Can you guys hear me now? No? Yes, you can. All right, I'm scrolling through these comments. Um, I don't know. I didn't charge my mic, so sorry. That's one reason why I don't use mics whenever I vlog, because I'm always afraid I'm not going to have to charge. I'm going to be talking, and it's just not going to work. But what I was saying is if I would have planned this right, so someone asked, was I doing a back-to-back? -back? This is a different ship. So I got off Carnival Panorama yesterday from a seven-day cruise. Now I'm on board Discovery Princess for just a three-day cruise. And I figured since I was flying all the way over here to the West Coast with the family, they're back home right now, that it just made sense since I don't have anything else to do when I go home to just stay you know, here and get on another cruise ship. But if I would have planned this well, um, I probably would have done a five or six night cruise only because... Um, I'm literally going home on Wednesday and coming back on Saturday. So I have something else going on here um, Saturday. So I probably would have just stayed here. I didn't think that through, but it is what it is. All right, let's see. That is a great area. Very quiet. Yes, it is. This is the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys around for a little bit. I'll get looks. I'll get stairs. <laughs> so I'm actually for this, this, uh, for this sailing, I am using my um, phone to vlog. I never just use my phone. I always use a, a, I always use either my 360 or my GoPro. But the last cruise on Princess, I got a lot of stares, and I've had a, I had a couple people ask about recording. Um, so I figured I could look more discreet with um, just my phone versus having my GoPro and all of that. So, so yeah, I figured that. Um, Foot Spa Pro says, my dad owns P&O Cruise. Really? Well, have your dad reach out to me. <laughs> we like to try out P&O Cruise. <laughs> um, but welcome in Foot Spa Pro. Appreciate it. Um, uh, he doesn't roll on that. He works there. Oh, he works there. Got it. I don't know. Do we have a P&O Cruise that leaves from the U.S.? That I don't know. Let me drink some water and get hydrated and I'll walk you guys around. So right now we are in the jazz bar. I'm going to walk you guys here and then we'll kind of make our way up. It says get Sig Cruiser a slice of apple pie. I like a slice of apple pie. All right. So I'm going to walk you guys around. I'll probably get stairs, but it is what it is. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. But we are right now, we are in the Take 5 Lounge, which they'll have nightly entertainment. And now I hate that I'm vertical and not um, horizontal because you can't get the full view. But this is a really nice spot. I really enjoyed this. Um, I really enjoyed this on the last cruise. So every night they'll have different entertainment. And when I came, it was Women's um, History Day. So they had um, a Women's History Month. And they had different entertainment from... Um, Jazz musicians, um, really, really nice. Entertainment was great too. Hello. Hello. All right, so take five. And they have a bar here. And this is where I was sitting back here at the window. Can you guys still hear and see me okay? Or see the screen? All right, so right now we are on deck uh, six. We'll walk through the casino because that's right next door. Actually, we'll go to the theater so you guys can see the theater. This sailing is just a three-day cruise. It is going to end out of Mexico. Oh, there is an arcade here. Very small arcade, like really small. This is just going to end out of Mexico. Yeah, this is a really, really small arcade. I'm sorry if I'm spinning too fast. Let's check out the theater since we're right here. Now, I can tell you this. Yes, it's working smoothly while you're walking around. Perfect. I can tell you that when I was on Sky Princess, their shows completely fill up. Like, every seat is full, period. Like, you need to arrive early, 
every seat is full. And I don't think I've ever really seen that on a cruise ship where every seat is full. If you have Princess Premier, you'll have priority seating. And they have handy. So here's the main theater. And the shows are really good with Princess. Like really good. So you can access the theater from decks um, six and deck seven. Um, if you um, are in a scooter wheelchair, what have you, they do have the from deck six. You can just come in that way. All right, so now we'll walk to the casino. Is anyone booked on a, a princess cruise coming? I know Angela is because I booked hers. Now my next princess cruise, I don't know, I think I have one more before Sun Princess. Are you guys still there? I don't, no one's chatting. <laughs> Are you guys just watching me walk around? All right, we're gonna go to the casino. Oh yeah, curling, definitely finish it. It's one of the, the better um, loyalty programs or for travel advisors. Like I said, you're elite for every cruise, which like I get um, a full open bar or mini bar in the room. Um, you get invited to like the captain's um, events where you get free drinks and food. Um, yeah, you get some really nice perks. And I can tell you the casinos on Princess are always packed. The ones that I've been on every night, they're packed. A lot of casino players. Ellis McKinley says, is the Alaska group cruise on Princess? I uh, know it isn't. It's on Quantum of the Seas, Royal Caribbean. I do want to book a Princess. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I do want to book a Princess um, Alaska cruise. I did Alaska with them last year. Um, Crown Princess, but it was just a four-day cruise. All right, so we are here. There's lots of shops around this way. The Ocean Terrace Seafood Bar. I feel like my thing is bobbing around. So if you have Princess Premier, you can eat at the uh, Ocean Terrace Seafood Bar, which is sushi. That is included. Here you have, um, I was going to say the Schooner Bar. This is not, this is a... Uh, um, I don't know. Hold on. The crooner bar. That's what it is. I was going to say the schooner. This is the crooner bar. The schooner bar is on Royal Caribbean. So nice, nice spot. But here we are at the atrium. Or they don't call it the atrium on Princess. They call it the piazza. Lots of activities happen here. Now, I'm not going to walk the full ship <laughs> to the kids at school tomorrow. Dyson said, no, I don't trust his answer. Uh, babe, no, they don't have school tomorrow. They do not have school tomorrow. Yeah, the casinos could be larger because they're always packed. All right, so just to point out a couple of other things. Up top there, I'm not going to walk all the way up there. Up top there, you have Rudy's um, Sea Grill, which is a specialty dining restaurant. That is included in Princess Premier if you book that. Um, up here, you have another bar. But you have shops all the way around here. Down here, you have another bar. And then you have um, the International Cafe, which includes 24-hour um, sandwiches, suits, They'll have like hot pies, desserts, um, fruit, things like that. And that's included. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, I'll go. I'll go up to seven. Because seven is the main promenade. That's where most of your things are going to be. Decks, uh, decks five and six are your main dining rooms toward the back. Angela says, I'm super excited about going on the Sun Prince, and I certainly feel foodies will want to get that Princess Premier package. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, here's Gigi's, which is Alfredo's Pizza. This is a specialty, well, not specialty, it's a casual dining option. So that one is not included. I honestly didn't care for it last cruise. But I might try it again. Welcome in, Stephanie Elaine. Appreciate you being here. Welcome in, Ms. B. Brizzle. So here's another bar. Now, this bar has really good martinis. That's where I got my raspberry. Over this way, you have the shops. So I'm not going to walk that way. And I'm going to walk toward the back of deck seven. Yeah, so this Alfredo's pizza, I just didn't like it on the last cruise. But it is a casual dining option. So if you have Princess Premier, you get unlimited times here. You can eat as much as you want. But they do have complimentary pizza on the main pool deck. We'll go outside in a second. All right, here's where you go. Like if you want to get jewelry for your princess medallion, which if you guys don't know, the medallion is your room key. It's a piece of jewelry. But you can come here for all your information that you might need. Here's another bar. Guys, they have no shortage of bars here. Now, this is the Princess Live. McKinley says, do they have one channel that shows love but only? They do. It's on demand. So I finished off season two last cruise. I'm going to try to get through at least season three this cruise. It was something that I didn't realize I really liked. Love Boat is really good. I think as a kid, my parents watched it, but I was like, ah, I didn't really care for it. But now that I'm a cruiser, it's kind of cool to watch. <laughs> There's a bit of ratchetness on there, too. But yes, there is a um, channel that's on demand that you can watch. They have all the seasons of Love Boat. So Princess Live is where they'll have like karaoke, they'll have game shows, things, things like that. This fills up, especially in the evenings. So you want to arrive early. Whew. Sorry, guys, I'm kind of out of breath. Um, really hoping Princess Cruise Line is a great line. Would love to find a line where I would want to become a higher tier eventually. Yeah, yeah, I think they're one of the, I think they're a really good cruise line. Um, they do not status match. Yeah, this Penny, they do not status match at all. There's only, um, right now, well, Virgin Voyages is stopping their status match. And that's the only other cruise line um, between Celebrity and Royal, Royal Caribbean. Um, sometimes you can get status match. They don't really advertise it, though. Um, but yeah, Princess does not. All right, here we're at the promenade. I hope the Wi-Fi is holding up. I'm connected to their Wi-Fi. And they have some nice little areas to sit. This is the Crown Bar. So this is the Steakhouse, back this way. But you can hang out here. They'll have live music in the evenings. Um, so you can kind of just hang out here, get a drink before dinner. The Steakhouse is really good. And what I like about the Steakhouse on this ship is that like, I like ribeye. If you guys caught my last vlog, I like ribeye. And um, you can get one entree that's included with your Princess Premiere. 
Um, you get appetizer, um, chef's compliments, and then dessert. And then you can add on a whole other entree for just $10. So like the last time I had the ribeye and I added on the lobster for just $10, which I think is a great value. All right, they're still knocking out muster. All right, so we're on deck seven at the back of the ship. Now we're headed to the Vista Lounge. Let's see if they'll let me in. Oh yeah, so the Vista Lounge, they'll have um, movies actually. So when they do the movies, when they do the movies um, on sea, or movies on the big screen outside, they'll actually play the movies back here as well. which is really nice if you don't want to be out in the, you know, the elements. The anticipation. Bingo will also happen back here. Any gatherings with like the captain, the guys, the captains and the officers on Princess are very visible. So they'll have gatherings throughout the cruise. It's always back here. <sighs> so yeah, so anytime there's a movie, Anytime there's a movie out on the deck, they'll have it out here too. Or back here. And it's really nice because when you're having movies out on the deck, they'll bring you pizza and popcorn, which is fun. All right, so this is Vista Lounge. Hopefully they disconnect the Wi Fi. They're doing the safety alarm. All right, we're going to try to get in the elevator and go up so I don't have to walk up all these stairs. Yes, Princess is um, a sister company to Carnival. Um, I have not been on Holland America yet. All right, we're going to get in the elevator. If I get disconnected, I will reconnect. Yeah, they are... Um, sister companies, I think Holland America attracts an even older crowd. So I think Princess is a little more, just from what I've heard, I've, I have clients that cruise Holland America. Um, I hope to be on Holland America soon, but I can tell you that I think Princess is a little more diverse and the age range is not as bad. All right, I'm getting in the elevator. Maybe not. Yeah. I'll get quiet when we get in the elevator, too, so I'm not drawing attention to myself. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. We're going up. All right. We're going to go in here, guys. If I disconnect, I'll reconnect. Okay, so we need to scan. All right, here we go. We're going to go all the way up to deck 17. All right, guys. So I have the elevator. All right, my back. All right, so down this way, we're just going to kind of peek in. This here, you have Camp Discovery, which are the kids' clubs. I'm just going to, I'm not going to really walk down there because there's kids. So we're not going to walk that way. But just know that Princess does offer kids' clubs. And they're included. All right, hope I'm back. Did I go to the mass on the ship? Not yet. Oh, no. No, I didn't get on the ship until after. I don't think they offered. Hello. So here we are. Smoking section. Smell it as soon as you step out. Have you ever done a massage on Princess? I'm going to get a thermal spot package with massages are very high. Yeah, do it in port, Angela. I never do a massage on a cruise ship. They're overly priced and not that good. You can go to Coast of mine, get a $40 hour deep tissue massage. You can go to Progresso to Mayan Spa. Same thing. All right, down here you have the adults only pool. This is at the back of the ship. Oh, you did? Did you see me strike? I think they are hiding them. Yeah, they said they were going to have some Easter festivities. But yeah, this is the aft pool. 
It's really, it's really cool out right now. All right, I'm not gonna walk down there, but down there is the pool. There's a bar underneath us. Um, no, this, no, this is not Port Everglades. This is, uh, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in California. Yeah, it kind of does look like uh, Port Everglades now that you said it. Now, this is San Pedro, San Pedro um, terminal. Yeah, so, yes, hello. Do you know how we do You have to go on the app, and, are you on the app already? Did you watch the video? We watched the video, but then you that we didn't. Oh, um, you have to watch it all the way till the end, and then exit out, and then it'll register that you um, watch the video. And then you have to go to your muster station area, which is inside the ship. Um, which deck are you guys on? Dang, my phone died. Your deck 15. It'll tell you. Um, what letter your muster is it won't tell you till after you watch the video so you have to watch it all the way through and you can also watch it in your cabin so if you go to your cabin you can watch it on the tv there it'll register and then you go there and they just have you scan your medallion to say that you went yeah you can go now yeah you can go to your cabins now you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> you guys have a good cruise sorry about that guys You said they have the San Pedro, am I saying Pedro, Pedro, uh, fish market walking distance. Okay. Yeah, not many kids on Princess, but there are more kids on this sailing than I saw on the last two. I know you play in the casino, but do you ever do bingo? Um, I used to always do bingo on the cruise ships. I stopped because I would never win. But if you guys saw my Margaritaville at Sea series, I did win <laughs> $150 the first game. So I don't know, I might play this time. I'm not sure. So here we are at the, like the, uh, the uh, sports course and the jogging track. My sisters play bingo and they win. We got to look at this bridge. I'm terrified of bridges. So I'm thankful that I didn't drive. But yeah, that frightened me. All right, so here's the basketball court. Guys, you know if this was carnival, whether it's wet or not, this would be jam-packed right now. But also beneath me, I didn't go to it, was the buffet. I'm not going to show that. I know people are in there eating right now. But the buffet is huge. On this ship, it's Sky Princess. They have so many different options. Um, the food is pretty good. I actually ate in the buffet three nights for dinner on the last cruise. And if you guys watch me, you know I don't really do the buffet. The buffet was really good. Uh, this sailing is just going to, so this is just a three-night sailing going to Ensenada, Mexico. I do have a tour booked through Princess. Um, that's taking me to uh, La Bufadora, which is their the blowhole there. Um, I'm honestly only going to get tacos. Yeah, it's a full-length court. All right, another thing that they have on this ship um, that I highlighted on the last sailing is they have the sanctuary. The sanctuary is an adult-only area where you can rent um, a bed or a lounger. You can rent um, for a half day for $20, a full day for $40. Um, it was completely sold out. I got on the ship at 1045. It was already sold out. It's not something you can reserve in advance. You have to reserve it as soon as you get on the ship. Um, so high status. If you're elite, so like I'm elite, I was one of the first on the ship. Well... They kind of start letting people get on, but um, Princess does not have where you select an arrival time. You just show up any time between, like for this sailing, it was 10.30 and 2.30. So you just show up. I'm not a huge fan of that <laughs> because it was crowded already. So regardless of your status, but they don't start boarding. They start boarding with your elite first and then your suites. All right, we're going to walk down here to the main pool area. But yeah, so they don't, let me turn the camera around. So yeah, so they don't have it to where, like Carnival, you would select your arrival time and you show up during that time. Royal Caribbean, same thing, not Princess. You just show up. So everyone was at the terminal. 
um, it was pretty, pretty congested, but it went by pretty, you know, went pretty fast. Um, so yeah, so just keep that in mind, but we're going to go, um, this is, I actually go to a bar that hosts being on Fridays. I've been there maybe six times to play and won about six or seven times. Nice. Um, no, I play bingo at home. Me and my sister, Cheryl, we play bingo. I just, I just, I don't have that kind of luck on a cruise ship. All right, here's the fitness center. I have not gone in there yet. We'll just take a peek. Now, if you have Princess Premier, that's something else that's included, is they have certain fitness classes that cost certain types of yogas and different things. You can go here, and it's complimentary with Princess Premier. All right, we're just going to peek in real quick. That's in our... Lots of equipment. And then they have a studio that if you sign up for the fitness classes, you come to the studio for those. Yeah, Pilates. Yeah, you sign up in here. See Yoga 6. I don't know what any of these are because I don't work out like that, y'all. <laughs> but yeah, you come here and you sign up. If you have Princess Premiere, it's included. They also have the Enclave Thermal Spa, which I thoroughly enjoyed last cruise. Um, I did not get it past this cruise, although I probably should have, but highly recommend it. All right, we're going to go out to the open deck again. Or that does on the wall. Let's see if we can get out this way. Oh, this just took us in a circle. It did take us in a circle. All right, we're going to go back. I learned there are different bingo styles. Maryland played very different from Western Pennsylvania, and I missed a bingo. The lady next to me was more upset <laughs> that I missed it than me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some that take the bingo seriously. I come from a um, family. My mom said it. My mom's side of the family, they are bingo card players. So I kind of got my little gambling. My dad was a gambler too, but <laughs> all right, we're going to walk back through and we're going to go to the outside deck so you guys can see the pools. So feel free if you have any other questions. I appreciate it. we have 92 watching. and I appreciate you guys being here and happy Easter to everyone. And if you're just tuning in, I'm Raquel from MH Family Adventures. This is my 50th cruise on board Discovery Princess. All right, we're almost to the outside deck. What movie, what playing in the movie theater? I don't know. I honestly have not even looked at the app yet to see what's going on. The last cruise, they played Creed III, uh, The Color Purple, um, some Taylor Swift concert or something. And a couple of other movies, but I, I watched a little bit of Creed 3 and I watched The Color Purple. Thank you so much, Carlene. Yeah, and just says I'm from a gambling family too. Yeah, and guys, I came from a gambling family and we were a poor family too. <laughs> but they found, you know, 50 cents to a dollar to put on their uh, lotto every night. Every night my parents played lotto, just a dollar. I want to see Godzilla and King Kong. Are those out now? Are those newer, newer movies? All right, here we are. Finally, guys, this ship is big. So if you're going to be on Sun Princess soon, the Sun Princess is even bigger than this. So here's usually where they set up for like sail away. Um, here's the main pool. So there are one, two, three, three, four pools on this ship. Two right here on the main pool deck. Um, one all the way back that way for the adults only, which we'll go to. And then behind me, I just showed you. So there's actually two adult only spots. So the aft where we just were, where the smoking section was, that is adults only. And then they have one all the way to the front. Hold on. I'm trying to think where, which side am I on? All the way. I don't know if I'm front or back right now. 
All the way back that way, there's another adult-only section, like a whole deck. Um, he says, what's your status on each cruise line you sailed? Um, I honestly don't know top of my head. I can tell. I, I, Royal Caribbean, we have not done as many Royal Caribbean. Um, I can tell you that for Carnival and Platinum, um, we'll be hopefully a diamond next year. Um, yeah, I don't even know the other tiers. Because I feel like I cruise Carnival so much. I can only tell you I'm elite with Princess because I'm a travel advisor. And every time I cruise, I'll be elite. Although my real status would be Ruby. Based on the number of cruises I've done with them. All right. So also down here, you have the pizzeria. You also have Salty. Or let me just go down here. I'm trying to be lazy, not take all these stairs. But it's better to show you guys up close. So I love all the outdoor seating options they had. Um, at night, they turn these loungers into plush loungers. But lots of shaded spots to sit. I know that pool is cold. But here you have the sea view bar. Back there, you also have towels. They have blankets you can get. And guys, good thing about Princess, they don't um, require you to check out towels. They trust you. You don't have to check out towels or blankets. You just go up and get it. That tells you that's a different caliber of cruise. Did you ever think you would have taken so many cruises? No, honestly not. Honestly not. But once I saw what it did for my business, guys, when I tell you that I've booked 15 cruises since I left home a week ago or, yeah, nine days ago, I've booked 15 cruises. I have, like, four more in queue to get booked tonight. Um, yeah, once I saw me cruising, <laughs> equates to me making money, I'm all for it. I'm all for it because I'm getting paid from the agency. And I'm getting paid from the content creation standpoint. So, yeah. So, if you ever wonder why I'm cruising so much, that is why. That's why. Welcome in, Liam. Appreciate you tuning in. All right. So, back here, too, you have the Salty Dog Grill. The Salty Dog Grill is complimentary burgers, hot dogs, chicken sandwiches, tacos. And then you also have the pizzeria, which is also complimentary. Now, there's also a Salty Dog Gastro Pub inside on deck seven, I think, six. Um, that is a casual dining option. They have delicious burgers. And that's where you're going to find my favorite drink, the spicy salted margarita, uh, watermelon margarita. That's where you're going to find that. All right, here's another bar. You guys, they have a lot of bars. Hi, how are you? <laughs> yeah. We're here. We're here having fun. All right. Well, enjoy. <laughs> um, and then here you have a slice, which is a pizzeria. This is included. They have really good pizza too. It's thin crust, like the New York style. See, it's like the thick New York style pizza. Really good. Um, how do you keep your hair looking so... Uh, it looks moisturized, Angela. If you reached out and touched it, it'll tell you a different story. <laughs> My hair is kind of Brillo pad-like. Hello. She whipped that out of there. All right, we're going to go up to show you guys the adults only pool section. All right, I'm going to take the stairs for this one. Oh, actually, I don't think I have to. 16. Yeah, I have to go up one. I'll take the stairs. Oh, thank you, Carlene. Appreciate you being here. Have a good week. How does Princess compare to Carnival and Royal? Um, Princess is considered more mid-luxury. So Carnival and Royal Caribbean are not considered luxury cruises. Um Hold on, I gotta catch my breath. Retreat pool, this is the adults only area. This gets pretty packed on a sea day. Yeah, um, Carnival and Royal are not considered luxury. Princess is mid luxury. So, the food is a little better. I'm gonna sit down for a second. But here's the retreat pool. This whole deck here and above is adults only. So, there's two jacuzzis up there. 
there's some cabanas that are complimentary. You just have to be first, it's first come, first serve. All right, I'm gonna sit down for a second. Welcome in, Justin. Yes, Princess is owned by Carnival. Or they're all kind of under the same umbrella. But yeah, um, Princess is more mid-luxury. So the food is a little better. The shows are a little better. Um, Ship-wise, the ships on Princess are nice, but I've seen like Excel class ships that are nicer. Um, so it really just depends. Um, yeah, it attracts a different crowd. Um, Princess tends to have like average age about 50, 60. Um, you'll notice more people on these sailings um, between Princess and Holland America that um, have accessibility needs like scooters, wheelchairs, things like that. You'll also notice more, I don't see as many on this ship, you'll notice more like wheelchair lifts getting into the pools and jacuzzis. Um, although this ship doesn't have as many as Sky Princess. Um, so yeah. So yeah, so yeah, Princess would compare more to Celebrity, absolutely. Yeah, that would be a good comparison. Um, do you own your 100 shares of Carnival stock for the onboard credit? Um, I did at one point, I think I sold. Um, yeah, I, I think sometimes I get more onboard credit by um, just the offers I get. Um, all right, so I'm going to turn this around. And let's see. Show you guys this pool area then i'm going to take you guys to the sanctuary if it's open if they'll allow me now the sanctuary on this ship is not as nice as the one on as the one on sky princess um it's open so the one on sky princess had like a roof over it so like you could use it and enjoy it in any type of weather whereas this sanctuary you're not able to so Alrighty. Gonna go up these stairs. And then I'm probably gonna end this live stream so I can get situated in my cabin. So yeah, here's the sanctuary. But this is more of the adults only deck area. So you have loungers. And then like I said, the two jacuzzis. Oh, no, I don't jump in pools. <laughs> um, yes, the ship does go to... Um, hold on, let me think. I believe it does. I believe it does go to Alaska at some point in the season. Yeah, I'm almost positive. I think it leaves from San Francisco, though. I'd have to look it up, but I'm almost positive. All right, let me see the let me take a... Actually, I'm not. I see people. I'm not going to take you guys in there. I see people already in their robes. <laughs> I try to be respectful as much as I can. All right. Any last minute questions? I will have um, that in the vlog, the sanctuary. I've already gone into film it. That's why I'm tired, guys, because I've already walked the whole ship. So this is my second time walking in. But yeah, it is really gloomy. Um, it's, it's actually better than what it was. It was pretty it was pouring pretty bad earlier. Um, it's supposed to brighten up, so hopefully it'll be smooth sailing and not, not too many issues. You're welcome, Miss Bree Brizzle. I don't even know where I'm going. I think I have to go down one deck. All right. So I am going to, yeah, enjoy the tacos. That's the only reason we're going to Ensenada, y'all. Um, I'm going to see La Bufadora because when we went on our first family cruise in 2019 there, we weren't vlogging. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll just go back there um 50th cruise highlight that um it's really just you know blow hold blows water up they have a lot of um kiosk shops right there and there's a taco stand right outside so i was like oh I'll just take the ride there it's very scenic or what have you so um yeah i appreciate you guys tuning in if you could be sure to hit that thumbs up on your way out i'd appreciate it i'll probably go live at some point tomorrow is a sea day then we're in Ensenada, and then i'm back home and I'm home for a couple of days and I'm back to L.A. for another event um, on Saturday. So I probably should have just stayed put. But um, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Happy Easter to you all. Um, yeah, get out there. Enjoy the day. It's a good time with your family. And I will um, check back in 
at some point during this cruise, so make sure you have your notification bell on. But thanks for tuning